Ka! Ka! It's on chatter. I know I'm not alone in this, but I like making things. The only problem is I don't have a lot of those fancy toys like a 3D printer or a CNC machine or a garage. But who needs all that? I have some scissors and a hot glue gun so I can still make something pretty neat. So over the last couple of months, I've been live streaming my latest creative project. As you can see, it's very shiny. Really all I did was take an existing paper craft model and build it out of foam and vinyl. But I think it's cool enough that I wanted to show you what this process looked like. So I've edited the whole thing down into this one single video for you to enjoy. Also, we're going to chill with some music courtesy of Game Chops. So you can check out some links down there if you want more. I got this pattern from a store called Wintercraft, and you should definitely check them out. You can find them at wintercraft.myshopify.com, and I'll put a link down below. They sell the PDF patterns for these masks, so you can print them out and construct them out of cardstock or poster board or whatever you want. I mean, look at this. It's all so good. Papercraft in general is great fun because it goes together quick and you don't need any special tools. In fact, I'll show you, because the first step to making this shiny nonsense was to just make the original papercraft. I started by printing the pattern onto some nice cardstock and cut out all the pieces. You want to use something thicker than regular printer paper, but this is just a common cardstock you can get from an office supply store. Once all the pieces are cut out, the next step is to score all the fold lines. You just lightly drag a blade along the folds with a straight edge, making sure not to slice all the way through. And when you're done, you end up with all these nice, crisp folds. Exactly what we want. Then it's just a matter of gluing everything together. All the edges are numbered, so you match the numbers up and put the tabby part on the inside and glue it all up. this whole paper craft done in a single three hour live stream, which is about how long the instructions say it should take. But the paper craft itself is just there as a reference, really. Once I had it all glued together, I printed the pattern off again and started cutting out individual faces to use as patterns for the actual pieces. Then I traced those shapes onto this 5mm EVA foam and cut them out with some sturdy scissors. The secret here is that I'm making all of these cuts at an angle so that the bottom side of the piece is slightly smaller than the top. This is what lets the pieces meet at an angle and leaves room for a bunch of hot glue reinforcements later. Then I took those pieces and gave them a couple little dots of hot glue on the edges where they'll meet, just enough to tack them together. I wanted the joints to still have some flexibility at this point so that I could make sure the overall shape was good before securing everything in place. I also used the paper craft mask itself to help set some of these angles, especially early on. Really, I just didn't want to actually measure anything. And then I did all that a couple more times. You can see all the channels on the underside there, but the top side is nice and crisp.
Once all the pieces for the back half of the mask were together, I went back and paid special attention to all these corners. I wanted all of the faces to come to a nice point, so I avoided getting glue in any of the corners up until now. I made sure the pieces were essentially where they should be, and did a big dot of hot glue on the back side. Then as the glue cooled, I muscled the points to round and pressed them all together. Nice and pointy. Then all those channels got flooded with a bunch of hot glue to make sure all the edges are nicely joined and everything stays solid. Like seriously, there's a lot of hot glue in there. Perfect. There's another trick I used when it came to the front part of the mask. Some of these individual surfaces meet at a convex angle, which means I could get away with combining a couple of different faces into a single piece of foam. Then I scored the underside of the piece, kind of like I did with a paper craft itself. The pieces went together the same way, just now there's multiple different edges to account for. The front of the beak was definitely the hardest. Here the pieces needed to meet at a steeper angle than I could cut with the scissors, so I had to try to remove more material. In the end, I just pressed the pieces together real hard and hope for the best.
there's the two halves assembled, but I held off on joining them together just yet. Then a couple of things happened off stream. I finished gluing all the corners for the face half and did all the reinforcing glue on the inside just like I did on the back half. But then I also gave both halves a couple spray coats of Plastidip, which is a spray-on rubber coating that kind of sealed everything up and gave a nice flat surface for the vinyl to stick to. The next step was to apply the vinyl, but I have a confession to make. The first vinyl I got just didn't hold up. I don't know if it was this batch or this color or if everything from the store would act the same way. All I know is that the adhesive on this vinyl got really weird and it kept wanting to stick to the paper backing instead of the vinyl itself. I went through an entire stream of struggling with this vinyl, but by the end it was clear that this wasn't going to work. I bring this up for two reasons. The first is because I think failures and setbacks are an important part of the creative process and I don't want to just edit them out and pretend I'm perfect. I was disappointed at the time because I really liked the first vinyl and I just wasted an entire stream day working with it. But once I got over that disappointment, that allowed me to get some vinyl that did work, and I think now the final product looks even better than it would have with the first vinyl. The other reason I bring this up is that I glued the two halves of the mask together during that stream. It was easy enough to peel off all that vinyl, but now the mask was assembled in a way that made applying the new vinyl really difficult, so I had to kind of cut it back apart. But I just committed to moving forward and ordered some better vinyl. The process of covering the mask was pretty straightforward, I used the same papercraft pattern pieces and traced them onto the paper backing of the vinyl. And then I cut these pieces out just a little bit larger than the pattern itself, maybe an eighth of an inch on each side, just to make sure the edges overlapped a little. pieces were predictably more complicated than others, particularly along the edges of the mask and in the opening between the two halves. I added about an inch to any piece that wrapped around the edge of the mask to make sure it was secured nicely on the inside. Mostly it was just like wrapping a really intricate present. I focused first on the places where the two halves join so that I could get the mask glued back together. Look how crisp that is. This vinyl sticks to itself incredibly well, so all those little overlaps help turn this into a single cohesive piece.
go. Shiny and perfect. Then I got this strap glued in. That's how it stays on your head. The final touches were to add some accent details. I wanted this mask to kind of match the first one I made, so I did something pretty similar. I cut some long strips out of this silvery color and just eyeballed all the lengths and angles. I mocked up the design with some paper strips first, so I essentially knew what I was going for. But again, I didn't want to actually measure anything, so I'm really just copying angles from one part of the mask to another. that there weren't any ads or sponsors in this video. That's on purpose! I know I'm not even big enough to attract sponsors at this point, but I have no intention of doing so in the future. My goal is to build a community of lovely people who are interested in lovely things. This channel will get videos about anything I find interesting, which is basically everything. So if you want more of this, you should click some buttons about it. Down there. Those are good buttons. If you want full-length VODs of my live streams, those are all going up on my second channel, ReChowder. Or you can come hang out with me live on Twitch, Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Ka. So yeah, I'm in love with this thing. 
It's shiny and outrageous in all the best ways. And before you ask, I won't be selling this. This is a one-of-a-kind of piece that I made for a specific person, and I won't be making it again. I would entertain the idea of a bespoke commission kind of a situation, but I'll have to learn how to do the 3D modeling part, which is something I want to learn anyway, so I'd love an excuse to put some time into it. Anyway, that's Unchatter. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you stay kind.